So Gary Kasparov against Lyos Portish. And we've got d4, knight of six, c4, e6, knight f3. The so called anti Nimzo. But as soon as uh, b6 is played, that's the Queen's Indian Tabia. Knight to c3. And by the way, this move, knight to c3, sets up a Tabia that's named for Gary Kasparov. Kasparov's variation is knight to c3. So bishop to b7. Pawn to a3. Pawn to d5. And I believe this back here, by the way, this pawn to a3 gives it even another unique name, uh, Petrosian's Variation. Now if it's Petrosian's Variation as a subline to Kasparov's Variation, I'm, I'm, does that mean that it's the new Petrosian that played this, or was this somehow... Well, when was this game played? This was played in 1985. Was world champion Petrosian still playing by then? Or was he long off the scene? I don't know. When does the new um, Petrosian come on the scene? Anybody know about that? That'd be worth looking up. And to make it more confusing, his name is also Tigran Petrosian. So, in case you weren't confused before, um, the new Petrosian is Tigran. L. Petrosian, right? Tigran Levanovich Petrosian is the new Petrosian. He came on the scene in the mid 90s. The other Petrosian, the real Petrosian, <laughs> Sorry, Tigran L. Petrosian. You're not the real Petrosian. I did not cover Kasparov versus Baby Magnus. I, you, you mean, um, yeah, Tigran the Lesser? Is that, is that what the L stands for? Poor Petrosian. Uh, you better become a Grandmaster, though if your name is Tigran Petrosian. And so at least he accomplished that. You've got to give him credit for that. Um, the other Tigran Petrosian is Tigran V. Vardanovich. Wow. And he was active until the 80s. So somebody will have to tell me about Petrosian's variation here in this, if that's referring to world champion Petrosian or <laughs> Dick Ronnell. I can't call him the lesser king. He is a grandmaster after all. Which... Um, Match, are you talking about Fritz Koala? The, the one where uh, Gary showed up late, played a fast draw, and left without comment? Very, very rudely. Ah, oh, poor... Poor Magnus. Now, typically in the 
in the today's grandmaster segment we show only victories by today's grandmaster notable game although that would be notable i'm sure but yeah gary was not all that polite with his young opponent that was very um Unfortunate, let's just put it that way. Well, any losses, though notable, would be featured under that person's day. When that person is today's grandmaster, we've shown games that Gary Kasparov has lost against people who were today's grandmaster at that time. So, anyway, Gary did make it up to Magnus later on and became his coach, so let's not forget that. Gary coached and helped Magnus on his way to the World Championship. But, and one, one sad thing about being in the public eye is when your humanity shows with punctuation as it did the day that Kasparov was late, drew with the boy Magnus, and left in, in a very um, curt manner. It's easy to criticize Gary Kasparov. I mean, we want him to be a great guy because he's Gary Kasparov. <laughs> we don't want him to be a jerk. Let's cut him a little slack. We've all been jerks at one time or another in our lives. We've all been rude at one time or another. We were just lucky that we weren't so good at chess that there were a million people watching us be a jerk. Oh, I saw Irina Crush one time in such poor sportsmanship. I mean, it's a shame. Her response was a shame, but haven't we all been so upset I mean, think about this now. You've seen me go ballistic on this stream. And I'm a pretty nice man. <laughs> Just ask me, I'll tell you. You get so emotionally attached to your chest. So you're, you're putting so much energy You can't even, I'm sure there are some clips on my page here that, yeah, when I'm intense, I am intense, which reminds me of my last visit to the psychologist. It was shortly after my trip through New Mexico. And I was having these dreams, these very strange dreams. One night I would dream that I was a teepee. And the next night I would dream that I was a wigwam. And my doctor said, well, obviously you're too tense. Okay, there you go. I have cried over chess games. I've cried over victories. I've cried over losses. Losses that should have been victories. Losses that should have been... Victories that should have then been draws that were then losses. <laughs> 
But I have uh, actually wept one time I won a tournament and the final game in the final round um, I, ha I had a great combination and I won the game in 19 moves. It was the final round, so keep in mind, whoever won that game was going to win the tournament. And uh, it, it brought me to tears. I was so emotionally wrapped up in the game, so focused, so, and when I saw that combination that led to victory, I, in, on the 19th movie, resigned. I wept. I mean, not all that emotional, but at that moment, at that moment, I, my feelings were so um, full. Right, I gotta get a move on with this game because I've gotta get a move on with um, getting ready for my lesson and my class tonight. So, okay. Pawn to e3 here. Knight takes c3 and pawn takes c3. Bishop to e7. Bishop to b5 check and pawn to c6. Bishop back to d3. And we're still in the database. Still a hundred games into the database here. On the C5 castles. Knight to C6, bishop to B2. I'm gonna have to take this, I'm so sorry. Hey, Keith. Hey, Coach Daniel. Not to uh, take all your time, I just wanted to uh, reach over the phone real quick. Uh, so I saw your text about um, 430, you're able to get to the center, no rush, and is that okay? Everything okay for that today? Yeah, we're all set for that. Sounds good. Uh huh. He's a pretty gifted student, so um, kind of like the theme to the assessment. I would go through that pawn level, just seeing if there's anything he totally doesn't understand. Um, and, you know, I would try and date most likely on the cusp between like a pawn or a knight. Um, so I know he might want to use that little spiral notebook, the page that's got the, um, it's got a list of like 10 things from Elliot and Neff that he's like, if they can do these 10 things, let's put them in the knight level. You know, the, yeah. Yeah. Just be where I would start. And then, um, you know, his, his dad, I, I spoke to his dad about the, the entire program today, you know, about the levels and the different lessons that they've been working on. Uh, so it should be a pretty, pretty easy uh, opening for you. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Daniel. I'll see you there. Yep. Yeah, bye bye. Oh, did I not mute that conversation? So sorry. <laughs> I'm such a professional. I, I really had to take care of that. I don't know why he couldn't accept my text message, but uh, I just wanted to make sure it was all clear because, I mean, it is an income opportunity, and I don't want to miss out on it. All right, so rook to c8, queen to e2. Castles. 
Rook A to D1. And we're on move 14, still in the database. Queen to C7. Pawn to C5, and pawn takes D4 is the first move out of the database. <laughs> Moving Dutchman, you're cracking me up. Couldn't hear the other one, so no worries. Uh, or barely hear him. <laughs> anyway, yeah, how to how to make your stream a quality stream. Step one, talk on the phone while you're talking to your viewers. It's remarkable that, okay, I can see why this move was not played based on the evaluation bar, why this move is unique, why no one else has played it. <laughs> <laughs> My stomach was louder, Moscatel says. So E takes D4. You know, I haven't had any lunch yet, now that you mention it. I had a banana when I ran up and down the stairs earlier. But that was it. I forgot to eat lunch. And that's another time I get terrible. I get um, hypoglycemic. And that's not good. I get ugly when I get hypoglycemic. Very ugly. Please eat. <laughs> we don't want to. Yeah, I'll uh, finish this game and close out the stream, and uh, then I'll eat. Pawn to d5. Well, I mean, the banana should be enough to keep me from hypoglycemia, I would hope. And by the way, today's the last day. I'm, I'm, I decided to set up these weekly goals to see how I can do. Most of the subs, I think probably all of the subs, maybe there was one or two subs that were not gifted, that were purchased by the subscribers themselves, but Roadkopf gifted close to all of those eight subs this week. Not too far on the bits, but uh, I did have... Um, um, Blazero drop fifty dollars in my lap yesterday so that was very nice D take or e takes d5 laser is very generous very kind and he's good at chess he makes good comments and observations When I watched him yesterday, he was playing poker. And that was intriguing. I don't know much about poker. But watching him play it was fairly interesting. The kind of vampire. Yeah, you wouldn't. Moscatel wants to set up a regular streaming schedule. I if If I can get a little bit of regular support, I'd like to make my program regular and have a regular daily or almost daily five days a week broadcast Monday Tuesday Thursday Friday Saturday broadcast that would be nice
at various times, a couple of morning shows, a couple of evening shows, maybe a, a late night show or two. All right, so after bishop takes d5, now we're looking for a classical bishop sack. And speaking of donations, Rotkopf is raining money on top of my head here. Thank you for that gift and subscription. And look at the, that bar. That is four sevens right there. 7777. So thank you for that gift. And all of your support. All right, so here we're staged for a classic bishop sack. First of all, this bishop is unprotected. So I guess the knight can't come to its usual g5 square because of the other bishop. But the rook can take on d5 after bishop takes pawn. And that is what was played. King takes bishop, rook takes pawn. Uh, rook takes bishop. Bishop takes pawn, king takes bishop, rook takes bishop. King tucks back away to g8. And rip that position open. Bishops are just tall pawns, says Marshall Lusk, especially when Marshall Lusk is playing with bishops. His bishops always have tall pawn syndrome. Sorry, Marshall, you left yourself wide open for that. So another bishop sack, and Marshall Lusk. Joining King's Bishop's Navy, courtesy of Rotkopf. And look, Rotkopf has gifted 49 subs to this channel. Wow. That is amazing, Rotkopf. 49 subs have been gifted to this channel by Rotkopf, my latest benefactor. I had a, another benefactor, Torpedo Supermarket, gifted many, many subs and has not been here in a while. But that was much appreciated as Marsh, um, Marshall Lusk is the recipient of, of um, Roadcope's benevolence. But then the other day I also had... Um, oh, Murderous Spartan, what a name to be so benevolent. Murderous Spartan was gifting out some subs the other day as well. Knight to e5, opening a path for the queen to come into black's territory. Rook f to d8, creating a tuck away square for the king. Queen to g4, king to f8. Now are we going to see, is another sack possible here? Might not be possible, he takes, oh, the, he can't come over here with check. And you can't leave this hanging, so close. Instead he plays queen to f5. Rotkopf 
Adding yet another sub, bringing his count to a total of 50. And that's the 10th sub setting sail this week. Welcome to the King's Bishop Navy. King. Pawn to F6. Now knight to D7 check. Wow. Rook takes D7. Rook takes D7. Queen to C5. I appreciate all the support. All the support. A lot of subs been gifted. A lot of donations have been made. The cheer bits, they come and go on and off, but, but all of that is appreciated. Queen to h7. Rook to c7. Queen h8 check. King f7. Rook d3. Knight to c4. Doubles the rooks with rook fd1. Knight e5. Queen h7 check. King e6. And that evaluation bar is enormous in Gary's favor. Queen G8 check. Oh my. Uh oh. Evaluation bar says mate and six here. G4 check. King F4. Rook D4 check. King F3. Queen B3 check. And black resigns. Black resigns. After Queen C3 to block. Queen d5 check is played. And after king e2, queen e4, only one move legal. And then bada bing, bada boom. Or would it be more elegant to play? this rook back. That's checkmate as well. 